Hi, this is Mark at Ding Dong's Garden. Uh, today I wanted to talk about Catalan trays. They're also known as tension trays. You know, we sell willow cuttings uh, online for people to buy and grow their own willow. And we wanted to find a way to show people what the willow that they're, they're growing would look like uh, when it was dried and, and, and woven. And so what we did is we decided to uh, create these uh, uh, tension trays. And it turned out to be a fun project. Uh, and it was a kind of a nice way to show what the colors and textures of individual types of willows would, would be like. And, and it also allows people to kind of compare uh, different types of willows uh, uh, next to each other. But it was also kind of fun I make, and we got a lot of feedback. So the, what we're going to, we'll probably sell a lot of these at the farmer's market as, as unfinished trays when we're all done. So uh, anyway, I wanted to share with you the, uh, how we made them and, um, and maybe at the end of the video, we'll just go through a slideshow where I'll show uh a willow in a, in this like in this weave like for example this is a uh, basfordiana and uh, we'll do a slideshow and label the slides and you can uh, kind of just see all the different varieties of uh, willows that are out that are out there and uh, what they look like when they're woven the first step in the process for us was making hoops you can see here uh, there is one hoop that we use as a as a base here and for the base, we used one type of willow. We used uh, what's called uh, Noir de Villain. It's a Salix triandra. Uh, it's very vigorous, so we had a lot of it, and and it and it generally grows to be uh, have more sturdy or thicker rods than some of the other willows. Uh, and and in order to get these kind of tight curls, we had to. Uh, we soaked it. We soaked that uh, willow for a few days and uh, that gave us enough flexibility that we could make this kind of tight circle without, uh, without breaking it. So once it's been soaked, you just kind of twist it on itself and it, it'll hold. It's, it's, it's pretty sturdy. Sometimes when it comes under the pressure that the, is created on the tension tray, it will, it will begin to uh, loosen up, but uh, we've got a We've got some uh, strategies that we use now in order to uh, keep it all in one place. So the next step is we're going to uh, uh, get some uh, straight pieces of willow and start the tray. The willow I'm going to use for this tray is called Blue Streak. It's similar to Stewart's Town uh, and a couple of others that uh, will create a bloom. And that I just find this kind of interesting where the the wood will uh, put out kind of a white substance. And I think the purpose is to protect it from water. So this would grow in a place that would flood frequently and the lower parts of the branches would, would have this uh, uh, white bloom on it. Uh, similar to a plum or a grape where you can see a little uh, white on the uh, outside of the fruit. And um, I think that also protects it from water. Another nice thing about Blue Streak is it uh, puts off these nice little catkins. So we harvested this in December before the catkins had emerged and they emerged uh, later on without any, even after we had uh, cut it off. So the first step is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna create eight sticks that are longer, you know, significantly longer than the diameter of the hoop that I'm gonna use. Okay, and now that I've got the initial piece set, one thing I do is I take the, the broad uh, or the widest part of the rod that makes the hoop and I put it on the side. So I'm gonna put my starting points here and I use two rods as, my, uh, as the cross pieces. You can see here, 
that these two cross pieces are the anchor by which we we weave. So that's what, what that's what I'm going to start with here. And it's simply an over under kind of weave. The first one is the toughest though. And there's really no, I haven't found a good secret to, to get it started, but you put the first one in, goes over and under. And then we push them together. Not the easiest process, but it's it's now started. So then to do the next one, I would just uh, go under here to make to alternate the over under, and then I simply slide it under this, and that gets me where I need to be. And then I do the same thing over here. And I go under this time on this side. And you can see the feel the tension already starting to build in there. It's gonna uh, that would uh, hold it together. And then I I will often flip it around, and then I'll go on this side, and then I'll uh, I'll cut more sticks and and continue. And now that I've got more st sticks, I'll just go ahead and uh, and work work on this. It goes pretty quick. You know, one uh, one thing I'll tell you is if the if the rods are really thick, uh, it, it, it's quite a bit more difficult to uh, to weave this because the these are pretty thin rods, so they're they're a little more flexible. But if I were to put a, a thick rod in here, it would uh, it might break. Because we make this except for the hoop, everything we're using. Oh, there I made a mistake. Everything we're using is dry wood. We're not, uh, we didn't soak this wood. And I'll cut some more pieces. And at a certain point, you want to put a little pressure on it to, to make sure it doesn't uh, get crooked. In fact, uh, I can't show this, but I'm going to step on it to give it a certain amount of weight. So I just step on the middle of it, and it bends in, in a way that uh, makes it more even. And you can still manipulate the the main cross pieces as you're as you're going along. 
although they get tighter towards the end. And sometimes at, towards the towards the edges, the the willow is not uh, the tension is not applying to the to the the ends as much as to the middle. So like so like right here on these edges, they may become a little loose, but it's uh, nothing you can't fix with a little bit of string. Um, it would be nice if the tension held the whole time, but uh, sometimes it doesn't. And these are definitely rustic. They're not. Uh, they're not finished. They're not coated or anything like that. But you get kind of a nice, nice uh, kind of rustic uh, tray out of it. So at this point, I'm going to trim it. And what I'll usually do is, uh, you could leave it unfinished and then decorate it with string or some kind of, you know, you can decorate it. But what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go ahead and trim it real quick. And I usually trim it a few millimeters away from the, the food. And I'll do the same on the other side. here. And then the last piece And that's it. So this is the, oh, oh, we'll do the ends here. Let's do the ends. So it's not perfectly symmetrical, but uh, yeah, I guess it's some character. And uh, that's it. And, it. and it's pretty solid in there. It's not gonna, uh, it, can, it can come under quite a bit of pressure without falling apart. So there's uh, some other, uh, variations on this we can look at. Like this one, um, this is blue willow. Uh, I just, I, I arched the center pieces and I only have one uh, stick for the, each of the centerpiece sides where this has two. And then my, my weave is made up of a very uh, narrow or very small gauge of a, of a, of a rod. And then here, uh, I let, I did kind of a square cut on the edges. Uh, and of course, you can do different types of willow. Like here, you can see two tones. I think this is uh, this is Britzensis and wintergreen. Uh, and the Japanese willows, they really dry to a beautiful black. And this is a, a blue willow, which is the same as this, and French Gilles Rude, which is a kind of a bright colored willow. 
And then the last thing I want to show you is, uh, is this. This is one we did a couple years ago. It's still quite pretty. And the interesting thing about it is uh, uh, just like the, the willow I showed you here that we did our tray with that has a bloom, you could still see the bloom on this willow even after a couple of years of being dried. Just very neat. Anyway, what I'll do is uh, I'll just let the uh, video continue to run and I'll add on a bunch of like a slideshow of, of all the trays we've done and I'll show you the, uh, the name of the willow that the tray is made out of. Um, so if you have any questions about how we do this or uh, uh, about the, the willows we use to make it, uh, please let us know. Thanks.